Hello friends, this is Lee, and I share videos about photography as an art and as a lifestyle. And today, Raymond and I are at the Grand Canyon, one of our very favorite places in the entire world. We have brought a bag full of camera gear we have cameras, we have lenses, some of them are borrowed, and we're just going to have a good old time. Now, what started this trip today is that Luminar Neo reached out to me a few weeks ago and said, hey, we are having our two-year anniversary. Do you want to work together on something? And well, of course I said yes, because I really like Luminar Neo and it gave me an excuse to come to the Grand Canyon. So happy anniversary to Luminar Neo and thank you to them for sponsoring this project. So Today, we are going to take a bunch of photos and I will be editing them in Luminar Neo for you all. And Raymond and I are both going to discuss just a few of the things that we look for in photo editing software. Let's get to it. To set the stage, we arrived to the south entrance of the South Rim in the late afternoon with the plan to drive Desert View Drive East to Desert View Tower for sunset, visiting a few of the stops along the way. You can see here that we had some beautiful clouds in the sky, so we did expect a dynamic sunset. For gear, we had a lot of lenses to choose from, but we ended up using our two Lumix S5 II bodies and a few lenses from Lumix and Sigma. From Lumix, the 24-70mm f2.8, and from Sigma, the new 500mm f5.6 lens, and for just a few shots at the end of the day, the new 15mm f1.4 diagonal fisheye. Okay, let's check in with Raymond. The thing about editing software is it's got to be easy to use. With the pictures we take, I like to edit them, but I don't like to spend a lot of time doing it or trying to figure things out. I like spending that time taking pictures. My thoughts exactly. I'll show you some of these specifics later, but as I edit a few photos, let me tell you a story. I was recently with a group of professional photographers at the Leica headquarters in Germany. As photographers do, we talked about photography. A group of us were discussing editing and Luminar Neo came up. The perception seemed to be that it was more for doing big AI type editing. The sky replacement tool was heavily covered on YouTube when it was introduced, so I think that's where the perception came from. And yes, there is a really cool sky replacement feature. Here's a before and after from a time when I tried it out. I will link to that video in the description, but Sky replacement is one of my least used features in the software, and I told these photographers as much. I find Luminar Neo to be a solid basic editor, but it does also have smarts that make it super easy to use, ranging from a slider that smooths skin in one step all the way to things like fully replacing the sky. Lots of options, which brings us to the next thing we want in editing software. This might seem like a little bit of an obvious one, but we need to see the adjustments that we want. Because if we didn't have all of the adjustments that we want to use, there would be no point in using the software. We don't want to be limited by the software, I should say. We only want to be limited by our imaginations. So let's go back a moment and I can show you some specifics of what I did for some of these photos. I have basics here, including the camera profiles. Like I said earlier, all of these photos were captured with our two Lumix S5 II cameras, so we see all of its profiles here, which is nice to have because it can act as a shortcut to get you where you want to go with an image. That being said, I didn't use it on these images. You will also find all of these discrete adjustments for things like exposure, color, sharpness, and there's also an optics section here where you can adjust for any lens distortion that your camera didn't already account for. You'll notice that none of these sliders have any adjustments though. That's because I wanted quick and easy, just like Raymond said earlier. Sometimes I'm all about getting into each individual slider, but sometimes not. Truly, if I can find a shortcut, like a slider that does multiple adjustments for me, I am usually into it. In this case, Enhance AI has two sliders, Accent AI and Sky Enhancer AI. This is the first thing I used. As you can see, pretty much as soon as we got to the Grand Canyon, the clouds started disappearing. <laughs> we were left with beautiful blue skies, but those skies end up looking pretty washed out. I used Sky Enhancer, which did a beautiful job of making the sky look natural, but also bringing back some color. We'll address the sensor dust in a moment. Then I used the Accent AI slider a bit to bring out detail in the canyon itself. These two sliders are each doing a number of things for me, like Sky Enhancer, masking the sky, and navigating contrast and color all in one slider. 
and I cloned out these two spots. This reminds me that I definitely need to take a look at all of my cameras and clean up the sensors. Next, I used Relight AI, which is another feature that has ended up being a great shortcut for me. At this time of day at the Grand Canyon, especially when there are clear skies, the lighting can be unbalanced. In this case, Mather Point here is shadowed, but the canyon beyond is quite bright. So I brightened up the near portion of the image, Mather Point, just a bit to balance the image a little bit. I'm not looking for an HDR looking image. I definitely want a natural look, but it helps create a more pleasing image where the differing areas look more like they do with your eyeballs in real life. And then the last thing I feel that this image needs is a pop of color. So I added a little bit of saturation and vibrance. Again, I want a natural look for these images, so I'm done. This took me far longer to talk through than it actually took to edit, thanks to what I've been calling shortcuts like the Enhance AI and Relight AI options. And that brings us to another important thing about editing software. The workflow is super important to both Raymond and I. If we don't have efficiency in our editing, we get grouchy <laughs> and we might not edit. I know there are a lot of us that have the same issue. You take wonderful photos, but sometimes they sit on your hard drive without being looked at, let alone edited or displayed. Editing can take a long time. I don't mean to repeat myself, but the topic of a smooth workflow kind of puts together two things that we've already talked about, ease of use and having the adjustments we expect. If I have software that allows me to quickly edit, I'm far more likely to actually edit and enjoy my own work. One thing that stood out for me the very first time I used this application was that it looks and works a bit different from our other editing applications. I realized that because the software is so young, the creators and designers of Luminar Neo weren't stuck with an existing framework to follow. They were able to think outside of those constraints and create something that feels cohesive. So let's take a look at this photo of me and how I edited it. First, this is crooked. <laughs> the north rim of the Grand Canyon in the distance isn't perfectly level in real life, but this is way off. Now the background of this image is really nice. I don't wanna do anything to it. You can see that we were nearing golden hour with this nice warm lighting. The colors are perfect back there, but I do wanna make a few adjustments to me. Actually just my face really. I'm super shiny, which I don't love, and I wouldn't mind smoothing my skin out just a touch. This shine removal slider is insanity <laughs> in the best way. I can't believe that it works so well and the amount slider is to smooth out my skin. This is just really harsh lighting and I wanna take the edge off the texture of my skin. I still wanna look like me. I'm a middle-aged lady and I worked hard in the sun and parenting two kids for each of my wrinkles. It's okay that I'm showing them. I have a number of different editing applications on my computer and I use them all, but I do find myself coming to Luminar Neo for portraits because of these options. I didn't do a whole lot to this photo of me, but I do explore these options more in a video that I mentioned earlier, which is linked in the description. When I can quickly brighten eyes or teeth a bit with a slider alone, no masking necessary, I am a happy camper and my portraits are better for it. Before I wrap this up, I wanna point out that I've only shown you a fraction of what can be done in this software. There are presets, there are add-ons that allow you to compile panoramas and focus stacking. I have been using the focus stacking for a project that you all will see within the next few weeks, so make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in that. And you know what else? They just announced Luminar Neo for iPad. I haven't tried it yet, but I am ecstatic to see what it's like. We are losing the light, so I'm gonna wrap this up here, uh, and Raymond and I are going to enjoy the rest of our evening here at Grand Canyon National Park. Happy anniversary to Luminar Neo. I very much like the software. I will add a link to where you can learn more about it in the description. I will also add a link to uh, the video that I made kind of with my first experience with Luminar Neo, and I edited a bunch of different photos in that video. So I'll link to that if you want to see more um, of me discovering the software as well. And that's all, everybody. Thank you to Luminar Neo for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching.